there's a ton of things happening right now on the food side driven by this intersection that's happening between technology and food. Obviously, uh, it was already under pressure. We saw a lot of change in the industry moving to organics, moving to this better for me feeling that it was needed in the world. Then came the horrible war in the Ukraine, and it's just created so much more pressure on the food chain system. Uh, my last business, I was in the restaurant business for 26 years with over 2,000 restaurants, and we actually did a lot of production as well. So I saw firsthand what was needed in the change. Now we've got the population growing by another couple of billion people over the next couple of decades, and there's just sort of pressure everywhere. And technology is what's going to solve that. Um, then you've got the whole animal environmental issues that are at hand. And so there's another push for change there that has to happen for the planet really to be able to deal with it and for the health of the food that we eat. So there are all these things going on at the moment. And certainly the inflation right now is a challenge pretty much for everyone at all sectors of the industry, whether you're looking grocery or a restaurant, um, cooking at home, we're all seeing it and it's rather substantial. We do think that that will mitigate. We're already starting to see some of the commodity prices come down. But uh, this is uh, a longer term view that we have at McGuinn of what needs to change to better the food supply. We all know the food supply system is a bit broken and we think there's a tremendous opportunity to improve it and improve the food we eat. So we're quite excited by the opportunity this fund with Adi has given us. But clearly you're also going to be quite selective about the companies that you choose to work with. I've noticed that uh, you've set a minimum equity investment per transaction of 100 million. Why, why such a high hurdle? Because there are really two different kinds of businesses in Europe. Europe's a bit different than if you look at Asia or the United States. Uh, really a lot of food companies have stayed country specific. They've stayed regional. And you have a lot of, I'll call them country heroes, that only get to a certain scale. And then there are certain ones that have been able to cross borders. They're very few, but they have been able to. So you, we see a very different dynamic in the companies that are ready to cross borders, are ready to move into new segments. And those are the ones we're targeting with this fund. It's because that's what we did. We were in 26 countries with my last company. We crossed uh, borders with 10 different brands. So that's where our expertise lies. And we want to help companies figure out how do I cross borders? How do I scale? And how do I put a bit more digital into my business model? And there's a select group that can do that across Europe. Uh, Henry, um, fascinating to get that insight into your investment process and where you see the opportunity here. Um, dive a little bit deeper, if you could, into the opportunity that comes from digitization. We're seeing all over London um, ex little examples of this with the implementation of these kiosks where you can just do um, entirely virtual ordering. Just how impactful is that kind of digitization for a restaurant's bottom line? Huge. Uh, we all see the problem with labor across all segments. You've got a labor on the delivery side, a labor on the execution side. And technology, some people fear it. They're like, oh, I'm taking the human touch out of the restaurant. That's true to some degree. But what we've noticed is actually when you get processes and you get the systems in place, you actually improve quality as well. You improve the ingredient uh, side. So we look at this both from a production side on the technology where we see huge benefits uh, coming in through uh, cultivated meats, through protein uh, execution um, at the fermentation side. But then in the restaurants, it's primarily a speed of service and a labor saving side. But I also see in the kitchen more technology coming in that's improving the quality of food we eat as well, less wastage, et cetera.